evening of Big Ten basketball. As the Hoosiers come to town and as we take a look at the standings of the Big Ten, Bobby Knight's crew ought to have a pretty good man on. And here's the reason why. Last Saturday night, they fell to Michigan State and all of a sudden there is a tie atop the Big Ten with six and one records. What about Lou Henson's team? Well, there they are at two and six in the conference. Now, amazingly, for Indiana, during a 13-game winning streak that they had broken this past weekend, all 10 players shot 50% or better. Saturday night, they only shot 39%, thus the reason for the winning streak to end. Now, speaking of hard luck stories, the Fighting Illini, only two wins in the conference this year. Eight straight teams they're playing tonight that have come in off a loss. Here's Dick Vitale with more. Hey, Ron, I'm in a control room and I'm having a blast. I can't believe this place. I'm all pumped up, but what else is new? Hey, you ready for this? Tonight I'm studying the tough losses of Illinois. It's been heartbreak city for Lou Do Lou Henson. Are you ready? Let's go right now and study one by one some of their tough losses. Let's look at number one. Here it is, Michigan State and Illinois. Score is tied after a questionable charging call against Rennie Clemens. Now Michigan State has the ball. We should he throws it in. Breakdown defensively by Illinois. And it's a layup and it's a win. What an unbelievable loss. Then we look at scene number two. You ready? Here it is. There's an offensive rebound by Dana Jackson. He gets fouled from Minnesota. No time on the clock. He goes to the free throw line and he knocks one out of two down. But that's all he needed. And it's a W for Clem Haskins at Minnesota. Then we go to scene three. I mean, we're at Northwestern. This is supposed to be Cupcake City. But forget about it. 43-43. They have the ball, Illinois. The ball goes to Thomas. Turnover City. Here comes Cedric Phillips. He takes it. He shoots it at the buzzer. A running one-hander. Unbelievable celebration. They go bananas. They think they won the national championship at Northwestern. Hey, it's been a heartbreaking city. And you ready for them to spring an upset tonight over the Hoosiers? The following have to happen. Number one, Rennie Clements has to handle the pressure. He has to handle the rock and not turn it over. Number two, Michael and Wheeler have to hit the three. Number three, Deion Thomas has to dominate inside. Remember this, the Hoosiers are going to be hungry after that big L up at Michigan State. Hey, Ron, I'm all pumped up. I love the truck. This is amazing. This is a lot of fun, baby. But I'll join you now, and we'll have fun at courtside. All right, Dickie, come on out. We're going to have a ball. It is the Fighting Illini, playing host to the Hoosiers of Indiana. We'll be back with the starting lineup after this. Dealerships. Like Quaker State, the big Q is one. Top motor oil. By United. Come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. Well, they're standing, they're stopping, and they're beginning to chant here at the Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois. And why not? That means Indiana's in town. And these uh, two schools, not a lot of love between the two. Matt Nover's going to get the start at center tonight as Bobby gives up a little offense to gain a little more post defense. Dick. Well, Nover also gives him a screener, and he gives him an excellent role player in their offensive set. And he's also an outstanding screener and rebounder. Well, Bobby Knight, of course, in his 21st year as the head coach in Indiana, 27th overall. And you see the winning percentage at 75%. For Illinois tonight, as far as the starters, uh, the go-to guy, the bell cow, so to speak, of course, is the man in the middle. Number 25, Deion Thomas. We'll call his name a lot tonight. Well, Deion is a 6'9", 222-pound player who doesn't have a lot of strength, but he's got good offensive skills. The key is whether they get him the ball at the right time. And there is Lou Du, Lou Henson. But who can ever forget, it was a year ago when it was General Robert Montgomery and I and Lou doing their friendly chat after the game here when Indiana clinched a championship tie with Ohio State. It's time for Big Ten basketball. Oh, there it is. It's kind of like, gentlemen, start your engines. It's time for Big Ten basketball. Jody Silvestri is the referee tonight. Ted Hillary and Randy Drury are the umpires. It's in the air. Nover taps it and it'll go to the Hoosiers. Number one, Illinois' philosophy immediately will be to play off Chris Reynolds, allow him to play with the ball on a perimeter. Garber Chaney underneath, misses the short jumper as they battle for it. The Illini come away with the ball with Tom Michael. Michael's an excellent shooter. Brooks Taylor, ball handler with the basketball, not really a good offensive player in scoring. Brooks Taylor, in fact, has really been having his problems shooting the rock. All their players, they're in last place in the Big Ten in field goal percentage and in free throw percentage, Illinois. Wheeler's a good shooter. Here. Just 
just inside the three-point line. Knocks down the deuce. D.J. Wheeler's coming back from an ankle injury suffered in the Minnesota game. Played some minutes against Northwestern. Big game for Indiana. If they want to remain battling Ohio State, they got to win this game here. Damon Bailey for three. In and out of Lucky on the bounce. And again, it's Michael who skies for the rebound. Damon got blanked against Michigan State. He was 0 for 5 and 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Didn't score a point. Leader outside. Bailey very quickly on him defensively. And a man defense by Indiana. Getting over the screens. They switch a lot defensively. Back out to Taylor. This is in the corner. Wheeler left alone. For three. That's excellent execution out of a half court game. Good ball reversal and putting the ball in the hands of the hot shooter. He looked really good yesterday, Ron, at the workout shooting the rock. Five to nothing. And the faithful Levitt as Cheney loses the ball heading to the hoop and he's fouled. I don't think another team in major college basketball has suffered so many heartbreaking losses. We showed three on top, but what about Ohio State? They come back from being 20 down against Ohio State, and Lou, Lou Henson's team's got the ball and taking the last shot to win the game at the buzzer. It's been Heartbreak Hotel. Little Elvis Presley. Look at those scores. Incredible. Four of them on the road and one of them here at home. And that's... As you said in the opening, truly incredible the way they have lost. And this game tonight, having played eight straight teams that come in here or they have to face on the road that have just lost. That is really the psychology of basketball. When you think about it, when you play a team as Cheney bricks two on the free throw line, after a loss, they're usually very hungry. It's where you play and when you play a team that is really important. Won't go that time. Anderson skies for the rebound for the Hoosiers. Bailey to Anderson. He likes that jumper from there. He can't get it to go as Nober battles inside. And Matt Nober called for the violation. Bobby Knight felt his team mentally really wasn't focused like they should have been against Michigan State. But he also praised Judd Heathcote's team. He said they executed in every phase. He said they just beat us from wire to wire. 16-point loss, their worst of the year before that it had been UCLA with that 15-point drubbing earlier. Illinois likes to utilize that high post screen for their guards. And the end will fight over the top of the screen. Bennett on the turnaround, not there. Cheney with the rebound. Bennett has really had a tough time shooting the basketball. Free throw line, he's shooting 27%. Anderson passes up the jumper. He'll take it back out on top. Fifth trip down the floor for Indiana. Still no points. Unusual. Illinois really plays some tough team defense. That's why they've been able to hang with everybody. A little backcourt violation called by Jody Sylvester. Bobby Knight very, very down about the way his team is playing early in this game. Illinois really plays good help defense. They communicate well. Look at them getting over the top of the screen. Great job communicating on the screen. There's the violation. Take at the shoot around today. The, the last thing that Bobby Knight said to his club is, we have got to play hard, very hard. As Thomas gets the turnaround jumper, and all of a sudden, it is seven to nothing. And remember the one thing about Bobby Knight. He is very stubborn when it comes to calling the T.O. He really feels it's a sign of weakness that you're admitting that they're dominating. <laughs> Illinois does not possess the kind of athletes that they've had in the past. When you think of 89's team, when Lou had his team go to the Final Four and they lost at the last second to Sean Higgins in Michigan, and then Michigan went on to win that national championship, this team here doesn't possess athletes like they've had in the past. Now oh, there's the first two, and uh, Chris Reynolds just blew right by him defensively. Well, nobody played Reynolds. They allowed him to go right to the basket. So if you just joined us, 7-2. to It's about to go under 16 minutes to play in this opening half. Right now as Michael knocks down the jumper, good for three. Illinois red hot from the floor. Ron, we talked about it on the top of the show, that for Illinois to win, they need 
some perimeter shooting out of Michael and Wheeler. And early in the game, they have made positive contributions. Look at that help defensively in the post. Nova takes it up strong, scores, and he'll go to the free throw line. That was a superb play by Matt Nova in the post. He really gets the ball inside, and they form a That's triangle good. around him defensively. Uh, they converge, the but he utilizes the post. Now look at the excellent pass to the free hand. Now he catches the ball. Now here comes the help. Oh, little head fake. Another head fake. And then he takes it up the third time. Great effort by Matt Nova. Nova misses the opportunity at the three-point play, and it's 10 to 4. The tempo right now, really important to Illinois, and they're controlling the pace of this game. Indiana 2 of 5 in the early going, and only 4 of 6 shooting. Illinois making that one extra pass, Ron. Thomas as they double on him. Thought they were going to call steps, and Damon Bailey will be called for the foul. Deion Thomas is a skilled offensive player. He just needs a little bit more help from his people. Now we're going to watch the post defense being played by Nova. There's the help by Anderson. There's the triple down. As Bailey comes over, reaches in, and gets called for the foul. Timeout. 15.36 left in the opening half. Illini by six. Dick Vitale in Champaign, Illinois, as the Illini have jumped on top by six in the early going. A couple of the keys that you talk about off the top of the telecast have happened early on. Well, you know, Ron, when you think of this Illinois team, they suffered a tremendous loss early this year when academically in September they were notified that Andy Kaufman, who's sitting right there, was declared academically ineligible. He averaged 21 points a game, and that's a tremendous loss. You put him in here, a lot of those heartbreaking uh, L's become W's. Michael for three. Can't give Michael time to look at the basket. He doesn't possess the quickness to create his own shot. And the same applies to Wheeler. They are getting perfect execution. Illinois out of their half-court game. 13 to 4. That's six for him as Illinois is three of four from three-point land. Indiana's not making anything happen with their defense. And offensively, Illinois is doing an excellent job fighting over the screens. Damon Bailey takes it to the hoop, and he is fouled as the ball is blocked by Thomas. Mentally, it's important for Damon Bailey to score some points here early because he's got to feel the frustration of getting shut out against Michigan State. That's the second foul on Thomas as the first substitute comes into the ball game for the Hoosiers. Uh, Greg Graham will check in. And notice one thing about Graham. Today at the uh, shoot-around, he went back and taped his left ankle. And uh, nobody really thought that much about it or exactly where it happened. But keep an eye on him, Dick, because he was limping with a grimace this morning. I think that he is by far the best six man in college basketball. Ted Hillary nails a technical foul on Illinois. Don't need a technical right there, Ron. A technical really can hurt. They have momentum. They're playing well. Right so, down the score at the time of that technical. All right, we'll do it. 13 to 5 is when it when it happened at the 15.02 mark. As Pachenson went on the floor. And that's when he was hit with the technical. Not a good decision right there by Ludo. I mean, to give them an opportunity like he has with his team playing really well, that can be the little lift that Indiana needs. He's still stalking that side. Watch out, he's going to get out of the coach's box and get another one. You better watch that. Jody Sylvester says, stay in that box. Come on, Lou. Come on, Ludo. Get back in the box. Come on, Ludo. All right, now he's okay. Now he's okay. Indiana from the line tonight, three of seven is Bailey. Knocks down the short jumper. They're 73% for the season, but only three of seven. Cold start from the free throw line this evening, but all of a sudden they cut it back to four. It's hard to believe that Bailey was shut out against Michigan State. He's been playing some super basketball. Taylor, not there. Battle inside for it. Pierce gets the ball back out on the perimeter. Scott Pierce lost his starting role. Bailey. Not there. Whistle and the foul inside. And that will go against, I believe, Damon Bailey. Damon Bailey in the last eight games prior to the game against Michigan State was averaging about 18 points a game, Ron, playing brilliant basketball. 
Damon Bailey picks up his second foul. Nick. Somebody's got to find Calvert Chaney in the offense. He's been disappearing right here today. Chain around on top. Illinois, Illinois needs the extra pass, the screen. Thomas, boy, he glitched him with the pass from about five feet. Thomas wasn't ready to accept that one. And a second foul against Taylor. It's his second. Taylor really not a threat offensively to score. Solid defensive player. He's got good feel for the basketball game. And here comes CC, Calvert Chaney. He's got to put some points on the board. So Bailey goes to the bench, and he will get a breather. Also for Indiana, Jamal Meeks, number 23, the senior out of Freeport, Illinois, comes into the lineup. He usually puts a real spark on the floor, both offensively and defensively. He offensively runs the ball up the court. Another whistle, foul away from the ball. And Rennie Clemens, and Clemens had pit on the floor five seconds, so he gets his first. Rennie's going to be the 16th foul already against the Illini. Rennie Clemens is a kid with a lot of quickness and good ability. He's a penetrator, should be a good defensive player. He's got excellent speed, number 11. Graham on the outside as he works against Clemens. Illinois playing the screens as well as any team I've seen play Indiana. Chaney takes it up, and that's going to be Michael who will be cited for the foul. It'll be his first. You know, everybody talks about Bobby Knight as the architect of defense, the builder of defense. But if you look career-wise at the job that Lou Henson has done, he has done an amazing job throughout his career with defensive basketball and defensive philosophy, but doesn't get a lot of notoriety about it. He went to the Final Four, as we said, in 1989. Leads the Big Ten right now defensively in terms of scoring offense. When I say scoring offense, I mean offense against his defense. Limited the opposition to 66 points. Two-point game as Indiana has closed the margin. Back down to two. Bennett with the turnaround and switches it. That's a real surprise. Not a good shooter at all. Maybe that is a good sign for Coach Henson and his team. Anderson hits the jumper just inside the three-point line. Lou Henson told me how badly he wanted Eric Anderson when he came out of high school out of the Chicago area. Mr. Basketball of Illinois. This is Michael going the opposite direction. In and out, not there. Cheney clears. Indiana wants to pick up the tempo of the game. They want to get the ball up the court quickly. I love his explosive ability, Ron. He's a premier sixth man. He's a quality player. Basket is good by Graham. Then they nail him with the charge, the makeup call. Here goes Graham, change of direction, explodes to the goal. There's the defensive player. He charged before he released that basketball. Well, that's the first foul on him. They scored the hoop, but as Dick said, he will collect the foul. Three team fouls against the Hoosiers. Jamal Meeks goes flying underneath the basket. Rennie Clemens really having a tough time shooting the basketball this season. Reynolds on the drive a moment ago did not appear as though that ankle was bothering him. No, he showed good quickness to the goal. I tell you, I'm so impressed with the job that Illinois is doing fighting over the top of screens. Anderson, two in a row for him. Hang on. Well, he's a good shooter. He's an excellent face-up shooter. That was good team defense. They were right in his face. But they want the foul right there. Something else that Anderson has improved considerably, and that is to be able to take the ball out there. And if he has the opening, to drive to the hoop. Bennett has it knocked away. Good job by Graham, but he knocks it out of bounds and a timeout on the floor. 11.56 until halftime. Indiana by a pair. Well, Indiana fell in a big hole early, but it didn't take long as uh, poise and a little bitter concentration that all of a sudden are on top by a pair. Well, better shooting as well. There's Ron Felling, who should be a head coach, does an outstanding job. Bobby Knight's assistant, but also a better job of moving the basketball. I think whenever you play good, solid team defense and you move the basketball, as you look at Illinois, the field goals now in the last three minutes, one for five, bad shot selection. I think that's what leads to winning. Same what's happened. You look at Duke and Oklahoma State. 
State. Oh, here's one for you. Don't get mad in Stillwater. I think they're going to get beat Wednesday by Nebraska at Nebraska. Danny D puts the first L on the Oklahoma State. Three-pointer one to go. That indeed would be interesting. Allen Henderson in the ball game for the Hoosiers as Cheney takes it to the hoop offense call. Indiana is really running the ball up the court a lot quicker. As Meeks pushing the ball out, as the catch by Cheney takes the ball up to the goal, the defensive player rotates over. Good call by Jody Sylvester. Charge. It is the first foul on Calvert, 15 foul against the Hoosiers. You know, I mentioned Oklahoma State. Certainly they've had a great year, but I really feel that Nebraska is going to catch them. I also feel this. I don't want anybody to get mad at me from the other conferences. The best conference in basketball is the Big Eight Conference this year. I don't Flat disagree out. with you. I don't and disagree with you. It is the best conference from top to bottom. Even Colorado almost beat Kansas down there. You're going to lace them up and come to play everywhere in that conference. Iowa State's another one. Doesn't get a lot of recognition. You don't want to go to Ames and play. Well, they beat Minnesota and they beat Iowa. Wheeler fouled in the way to the hoop. It's going to be Greg Graham who will pick it up, but it's his second. See, they don't possess the kind of athletes. When you think of Illinois, I think of Kendall Gill, Mike Bardo. I think of guys like Nick Anderson when they had that great team of Marcus Liberty. And this guy knows a little bit about great teams because I don't think there's been a better team than a team in 76 at Indiana when they had Buckner and company. In fact, they were the last team to go undefeated in college basketball. Ooh, Notre Dame, Detroit Mercy beating them. That's my former school. They changed the name, University of Detroit. UMass off and running in their game. This is the first time that Illinois has been to the line in this game tonight. Home game for them. They get 11-26 until halftime. You know what's also interesting right now, when we look at Indiana, they are really doing a better job of moving the ball, and now they bring Henderson to give a little bit more size. See, they're basically zoning up on top. They're not playing Meeks, and they weren't playing Reynolds when he was on the floor. Wheeler bodies up. Ball is tipped, knocked out of bounds by Illinois. It'll stay with the Hoosiers. Pierce has really struggled offensively. There he is directing traffic, number 21. Shot clock at 25 as Cheney deep in the corner against Wheeler. Very quiet crowd. I think a lot of it has to do with losing all those heartbreaking games. They don't mentally, I don't believe, feel that they really can win here today. I'm talking to fans. Now it's going to be Pierce who will be called for the violation. One thing about Pierce, he plays very hard, very tenacious competitor. His father was a college basketball player. Look at Wheeler right now trying to check up on Cheney. Look at him right there. Cheney, look at him trying to get post position. I mean, he's mugging him. Are you kidding me? Look at that denial. He says, you're not going to touch the ball, Cheney. Cheney says, he's mugging me. I thought this is basketball. Anderson gets the first one as uh, 17 fouls against the Illini. Very tough to go undefeated. Duke right now, as we talk about undefeated tomorrow, they battle North Carolina. It's in Chapel Hill. I can't wait to get down for that baby down at Chapel Hill. I'll be watching it. That'll be a lot of fun. Michael knocks it down. Somebody's got to tell him in their scouting report that he is an excellent shooter if he's allowed to catch the ball and look at the basket. Doesn't create a lot, but you're right. When he squared up to it and left alone, he's got eight points already. Henderson takes it back up at his first two of the night. Nobody blocked out on Henderson. He really forced the first shot, but gets the offensive rebound. Well, he's finally better after that uh, bout with strep throat, but he lost 10 pounds, and he didn't have 10 pounds to lose, Dick. He's got to get physically stronger if he's going to become a dominant player. Lou Henson's getting some good players next year. Remember this name, Richard Keene coming in from out of Collinsville. Bobby Knight told me today he liked Keene, tried to recruit him for Indiana. Two turnovers apiece in this one tonight as we go under 10 minutes, make it three for Indiana. Bobby is up, and of all the things that he does not like, and you can see that Greg Graham does not want to do the obvious, and that's look over at the bench <laughs> right now. You, you don't blame him, do you? Whistle and a foul against Jamal Meeks. Locking foul on Meeks. I got a big kick out of the players when they walked in a hotel yesterday. I was in the lobby, and I said, how is the general after the loss? Eric Anderson looked at me and says, coach, what kind of question is that? <laughs>
He's such a fierce competitor. Also, he wanted to send a salute out to Luke Hornacekka and also to Al McGuire and company and all those people getting into the Hall of Fame. Well, you see those numbers. Well, it misses the front end. Two of three for the line for the Illini. Indiana has already been to the line for 11 tries. Illinois loses by two to Ohio State and they're 16 for 31 on a free throw line. In for Indiana, number 21, Chris Reynolds. He'll replace 23, Jamal Meeks. Meeks comes out, Reynolds comes back into the lineup. They really rotate Meeks and Reynolds and get maximum out of them. They look for them to distribute the basketball, play defense. Three point of one go, and here come the Illini. Three on two in the break, knocked away. Nice defensive hands by Graham. Anderson to Anderson. Calvert Cheney fouled on the way to the hoop, but let's see. Could have been any one of a couple. I think Clemens will pick it up. The one thing Indiana does really well, they play very unselfish basketball, always looking for the high percentage shot. And that's really the sign of the great teams. Iona up six. Give a cheer for Iona. St. Peter's up 14. Teddy Fiore. Liberty having a real good year this year, plus eight. Albert Cheney parted up recruiting class that came in two years ago. Many said the best recruiting class until the North Carolina class. And then you had the Michigan class, and everybody said, wait a minute. They were the best. Look at this number right there. Is that impressive? You make more free throws than your team's attempt against you. That's going to give you a great chance to win when you go to the line about 30 times a game. He's now four of six, getting closer to what his season percentage is. Duke does a great job with that as well. They spread the court, dribble penetration, and they go to the free throw line. Taylor back out to Pierce. Pierce takes the step, and all of a sudden, Illinois, that's four turnovers, and they've turned it over two of the last three trips down. Personally, I think Lou Henson's done an amazing job to have these kids battling the way they have and having six games in the Big Ten go to the last minute. In fact, four have gone down to the last 16 seconds. Well, Clarence is the only senior on the roster. Everybody else are freshmen and sophomores with the junior there. They try to fake right there and get a charge. Jody Sylvester, one of the premier officials in the game, wouldn't fall for it, and he calls the block. Well, coming up uh, after this one tonight. Hey, Ronnie Battle for Auburn. You people watch Ron Battle, one of the real underrated players in the country. Scored 43 the other day, hit eight out of nine threes against Georgia. And Vanderbilt's one of the real disappointing teams this year in college basketball. They have really, really struggled, Eddie Fogler's team this year. You got to look at number 33, Mark Davidson, just a moment ago. The freshman out of Aurora Christian comes into the lineup, coached by his father. They, in high school. They feel he's got a chance to be really a good player here, but he's really struggling mentally, trying to make too, too many things happen. He's really struggling in terms of his offense. He's got Illinois looking to score. They haven't scored in the last four and a half minutes, and they're not going to score right now either, as it is taken away again. It's Graham. Too predictable what they're doing, trying to enter the ball down in the box. Oh, oh good look inside. All of a sudden, Thomas stepped in front. Dion will get the steal, and it's four turnovers against the Hoosiers. 25 to 19, very quietly. Indiana has moved out in front by six, as we have eight and a half minutes to play. Starting to get down to some big possessions for Illinois. They can't fall big behind. Wheeler took the ball up strong. The Indiana bench thought that possibly there should have been an offensive foul called. As you can see, Reynolds go flying out of the picture. In fact, Coach Knight a little bit disbelieving of the non-call offensively. I had an interesting phone call today. I told you about it when we went to lunch. Jerry Tartani and the Tart call. And he said, hey, let me tell you something. If there's one team that can beat Duke, you know who it is? He said, I feel it's Indiana. So I passed that on to Bobby Knight, and Bobby Knight had a smile on his face. He said, my guy, Tark. And then Tark also told me, he said, my kid's dick. They've won 15 in a row, and we're doing it with a 1-2-2 zone, and nobody knows about it. Nobody's shooting better than 40% against us. He said, we're playing great basketball right now, getting maximum out of our people. Jerry, I told you, I'll tell everybody about it. He's using the zone. He said it almost kills him, but he feels that's the best for his club. Adjusting. That's what coaching is about. Adjusting to your personnel. And that's what Tarkanian has done. Eight points for him now. Three of five for the line, and it's 25 to 20. 
Davidson is physically very strong looking player. Number 33. Cheney. Back out on top to Anderson. Three pointer won't go. Cheney with the tip. Henderson comes away with it and has it knocked away, and he'll be fouled by Davidson. I believe is who they'll get. Thomas was on the inside. Look at Davidson. I mean, he's a tough looking player physically. Henderson trying to work to the glass now. There goes the ball up on the glass. Here comes the tip that's deflected, and here comes Henderson. Oh, falls right in his arms. But there's that head fake. Oh, there's the head fake, and there's the body contact. Also, the word on Davidson is he is a tremendous practice player. They said he goes so hard at every workout. Well, like you said earlier, his dad was a coach, and usually guys that come from an environment where there's been a dad teaching and coaching the game, they only know one way to play. Henderson was rated number two in his state last year behind Glenn Rock. Robinson is out of Purdue. Hey, I'll tell you something, Ron. After seeing Purdue the other day, and I can't wait to go to Mackey next week because that's a great facility, I think that Gene Cady should get Coach of the Year honors in the Big Ten for taking that team and going out and beating Michigan at Michigan and beating Iowa. Are you serious? Wow. Misses that one. You can see Nova checked into the lineup. Eric Anderson is getting a breather right now. Look at Reynolds trying to communicate and read those screens up on top. Illinois likes to lay those screens up on top. A lot of back screens. See him running around laying some screens, number 30. Passed up the three-pointer. Bennett comes out on top of the hill. Now Clemens. Davidson on the floor. One dribble too many there. Blocked and knocked out of bounds, and Bobby Knight is up and said, how many steps did he take? We'll take a break. 7.35 until halftime. Hoosiers by five. Half court offense. Look at number 30, Mr. Bennett, who we just shaded. Watch him run up, and there is a screen. Freeze it. There's screen number one by Bennett. Look, this is not Indiana. This is Illinois. Look at number 30. Watch him on the right side. Now he's going to go across. He's looking to lay another screen as they move the ball. Now he's running around. Freeze it. There is screen number two by number 30. Now he's not satisfied. Go number three. There's another screen, but he didn't lay a good. There's number four. Freeze it. I mean, I think that's Sloan screen number 45 of Indiana several years ago. <laughs> Knocked to the floor and stolen by Graham. I can tell you right now that ankle certainly doesn't look like it's bothering him as Henderson gets the follow and jams at home. Dick, this is a run. 13 to 2 was the score. Indiana trailing a run of 25 to 7 for the Hoosiers now. That was pure athletic ability right there with Graham in transition and the trail man, Henderson, getting the easy play. Look, coming over the top of the screen. Indiana really gets over the top of those screens. They communicate, they hedge. Dick, by the way, you want to know about the technical, what the score was. It was 13 to 5. Right now it's 27 to 20. I thought that was a big play. It seemed early. Yep. I thought that was a big play. Broke a little of their momentum. Long pass inside. Nover with the jump hook. Not there. And Henderson goes for the ball. Whistle against the Alina. Another thing with great teams, Ron, they do a tremendous job of being in the right place. If you notice Indiana, when the ball comes from the strong side, they always have people in a proper position for offensive rebounding. Well, the foul is against Wheeler. It's his first. Tenth team foul. Knowing your roles and understanding what your role is on a floor is so important to developing a good basketball team. And that's the key, for example, of Oklahoma State. Corey Williams is a terminator defensively. Eddie Sutton's son, Sean, is the point guard. Byron Houston, the big scorer. Henderson, 0 for 4 from the line, but right there is Cheney takes it back up for the free two. That's a big time offensive rebound by Cheney. The quick bounce off the floor, good hands. 29 to 20. Indiana down by 11 early. All of a sudden, they have just blasted on top. Illinois has really no threat on the floor offensively. They really don't. They don't have a big-time scorer out there that can really give them any kind of points. They have shut down Deion Thomas totally. Taylor with the bounce pass into traffic. Whistle and a foul called against Chris Reynolds, it looks like. Easiest player to play. We talk about it often. Is a guy that doesn't move without the ball. Mike Jarvis, what a job he's doing. Wow, bodies get Bob Lanier. Look at this. Notre Dame jumps on top, plus four now. Congratulations to the big dauber, Robert Lanier, going to the Hall of Fame. He's lucky I didn't put his career and destroy him in a year and a half. I had him with the pistol. 
Don't laugh at me. DJ Wheeler. Laughing with you, Richard. <laughs> Wheeler goes back to the line. Deion Thomas Ron has been totally shut out in this game. I mean, he averages what over 16 points a game. Well, he's going 18.4 right now, but one of the things he's doing is he's standing on the offensive end. But in fairness to Deion, he has no real perimeter people to create opportunities. He'd love to play with Kendall Gill and Steve Bartle. I loved that team in 1989. I thought they were outstanding with Nick Anderson. Jamal Mix comes back into the lineup for Indiana. Things will get better, though. They're allowed now to recruit. The one thing that's hurt this club, they've only been allowed to get two scholarships out the past two years. But now they're free again, and they're recruiting. And all the Chicago coaches say, we're going to take care of Jimmy Collins, the assistant in Illinois. Winner now in double figures. He has 10. It's Henderson with the jumper, and he is off the mark. There's Thomas with the board. Thomas has got to get a little better work ethic and get a little stronger physically. He's got to go into the weight room. Nova's really denying him the ball down in the post. See Dion there, big scorer. Right now, watch him in the post, number 25, being denied by Nova. Now he tries to get to the post, he beats him to the ball. Great defense by Nova. Pierce gets around to Henderson, jumper is not there, and here comes Cheney. Great. Check it, Graham. Good defensive positioning by Graham off on the glass. And Nova laying some screens. Working against Wheeler on that baseline. Nover. Meeks. Not there. Nover. Nice job. Didn't take the rebound and go back up. Got it while he was there. Notice the positioning again in the proper place. They always have two guys on a box, a guy in the middle of the lane trying to get a triangle and attacking the glass. They're so well drilled by the general Robert Montgomery Knight. Equals the biggest lead of Indiana tonight at nine. Nova's really accepting the challenge of trying to beat Thomas to the ball. Wheeler for three, not there. Thomas, and look at the job by Nova. Thomas had no place to go for the rebound because 24 was right there, rock solid. Yeah, he blocked them out exceptionally well. That's the final phase of their defense is the block out. Watch number 24. Here he is checking. There's Nova now. He's a role player. You don't hear his name a great deal, but here he is doing a heck of a job on a star number 25. He's going to beat him to the spot. See, he sees ball, you man, at all times. Then when the shot goes up, he spins on the inside and blocks him out. There he is checking him. Now he's waiting. Look at him checking him right here. Now look at the block out. Look at the block out. Seals him off. Great job by number 24. A coaching clinic 101 on how to block out. The Illini, one of their last eight. We'll be right back. Up plus nine right now in Illinois because they have not been able to score Illinois in the last eight minutes. They've had one basket. There's a look at Jimmy Collins right here on the left. Jimmy played for Lou over at New Mexico State when they went to the Final Four in 1980 and 1970, rather. They went to the Final Four, lost to UCLA. But Jimmy's the number one recruiter, and they love him in Chicago. He played for the Bulls. There was that controversy over the taping of a conversation with Bruce Pearl, the assistant at Iowa, with Deion Thomas. Deion's got a suit. And there's a look at Illinois' class right now. Very young basketball team. Only eight scholarship players because of the restrictions. They've only been allowed to give two the last two years. But now they're free as of January 20th. And they're hoping to get Rashad Griffin, a seven-footer who's a junior. Tom Hamilton, a seven-footer who's a junior. And they want Kiwan Garris, a tremendous point guard from Westinghouse in Chicago, where they produced a guy by the name of Eddie Johnson, who played at Illinois, Mark McGuire. And I'll tell you what, the popularity that Dion has in that city and all the people liking Jimmy Collins Illinois can get fat quickly if they get some of those kids Thomas trying to pick up his third point at Dick also we look over at the uh, at the stat sheet here he only has one rebound again to back up the point of the re play you were showing a moment ago the job that Nova has done on him and that's what Bobby wanted to do tonight he was going to sacrifice a little offense put Nova in the middle Henderson he would use on the wing they've done a great job keeping the ball away from Thomas Albert Cheney starting to get better shots now, Ron, at the basket. Ten points for Cheney. Four minutes and 20 seconds left in this opening half, and the Hoosiers now have opened it up to double digits. Ten-point lead. There's no substitute like shooting the basketball. If I were recruiting, that's the first ingredient. A guy's got to be able to put the ball down. Thomas reverses the move, and there's the other field goal. That's an excellent offensive play by Dion. He caught the ball at the right time. They got the good 45-degree angle, spun to the basket. 
Nova really head hunting. Look at number 24 laying some screens. Number 24, look at him. He's laying some screens, starting to get Cheney free. He's almost running the interference for him. Well, look at 24. I mean, that's an illegal screen. He's not allowed to move. Indiana, very patient. Plenty of time in the shot clock at 20. So Nova's going to take the jumper, and he knocks it down. The he most deserves it after all those screens. The most dangerous guy on the floor is the screener, because after he lays the screen, steps back, he's usually wide open. Another guy that is considered a very good practice player, a good work ethic. Tater loses it off his foot, and it will go to the Hoosiers. Deflections, they do an excellent job with that. Kentucky was the first team that I know that really charts deflections. That was created by UB Brown, who worked with Rick Pitino, and Pitino's utilized it. That's an offensive foul called against Nova. Okay, Illinois was still coming down trying to set their defense, and you can hear the crowd with a little roar there as uh, all of a sudden Meeks pushed it on down. Watch inside. 24 and 32. Look at 24. They finally got him here. They got him here. Look at him trying to post. He clears him out. I think they heard us. I think the, do you think they can hear me? I'm usually no. so silent and quiet. <laughs> they can't hear me. They can't hear me. Can they, Ron? Why am I so shy and introverted? You're trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> Some have claimed you don't need that microphone. I promise I would not say that Robert Bennett shooting less than 25% on a free throw line. Look at this. He I canned his lone jumper from the corner, and now he, and listen to the crowd. He just needs some confidence on the line. A young player struggling a little bit mentally on that line. I saw Shaquille O'Neal the other day, and he needs a lot of work on the line, but what a player. Shaq Nificent is just in another world. This kid's got great legs, great jumping ability. He's an excellent athlete, and he could be a solid Big Ten player, but he's got to improve his touch. He looked good right there. He looked excellent. Maybe he came out early and watched you shoot free throws. Happened to show on again, did I, Mr. Franklin? Yeah, you did. Ten in a row. They had him on the edge of their seat. Wheeler called for holding, working against Cheney. Boy, that was a pretty good matchup there. They were really growling at each other. Deion Thomas comes over. He says, TJ, don't worry about a thing. Don't worry about a thing. You got to be tough. Don't worry about it. Look, there's the screen. See, now that's a legal screen. He's not moving. That's a legal screen. He's planted. And he's trying to get over the top. And I think if Wheeler had not locked his arm, he wouldn't, maybe they would have called the foul against Indiana. But he locked it over his, over his left arm. You know, Ohio State had that big win over Michigan after Michigan had beaten Michigan State. And Ohio State hung on to get the W when Michigan had 13 points at the half. Jimmy Jackson was my midseason player of the year, but I'm going to tell you something. The way Shaquille O'Neal is coming on now, watch out, JJ. 37 to 27 as we go under three minutes until halftime. Oh, good look for Bennett there, and it is blocked by Anderson. Nice defensive play, and that's going to be a foul called against Thomas. And that is simply because of hard work by the Indiana defense. Watch out, Lou. Watch out, Lou. I don't want to get that Lou do all messed up. I unveiled my dicky doodle this Thursday with Jimmy and I, V&V and Sons, on the Cosby Show. There's a look at Lou do. That's three on him right now, Ron. That's three on him. Three on Thomas. Let's give another look at it, Dick. There's the hustle. And there's the deflection. He makes contact on Nova, the official right there. Deion Thomas came out of Simeon High School. He was one of the top five high school players in America. Sat out his first year, but the NCAA has granted him four years of eligibility. He's got to go to the sideline. You know, Bailey continues to sit on the bench over there. We just checked on it. He's been out for 14 minutes and five seconds. Well, Bobby Knight, unless you're going to play the game the way he wants it to be played, you become a guy that sits on that sideline. It's my way or the highway. Look at the free throw line already. Indiana are only 64%. They're usually about 74% as a team. Bennett skied for the rebound. Illinois looking for some kind of secret on offense. And it's got that good, powerful body. Oh, there's a fourth. That's a three-point opportunity and now in a free throw right. line. That's right. He's going to go that going to be a three-point opportunity. Cheney sitting on a bench right now. Cheney had to sit down. We're being told that he was hit in the throat. Out of Evansville, Indiana. Comes out of the same high school where they got a great high school player this year, Walter McCarty, who signed to go to Kentucky. Reynolds picks up the foul, his third. 
that really hurts. You're last in the league in field goal percentage. You're last in the league in free throw percentage. Very difficult to win. Look at Georgetown, plus 15. Alonzo Mourning, what a year he's having. And it's getting danger time for Villanova. They already have nine losses. They can't lose too many more games. But I'm going to play himself right into the NIT. 25 whistles already in this one. 25 fouls in the first half. We have 234 left until halftime. You know what the motivation for Illinois right now is? If they can win six of their next 10, they can break even for the season, and they would get a berth into the NIT, and that is their goal. Anderson with the bouncer, takes it back out on top. Anderson not getting free at all offensively. They gotta look for the big guy a little more. He's too good a shooter. Well, they get him along the baseline. He'll take it back out. They like to run those horizontal screens on that baseline. Uh, maybe got away with a little walk right there. Meeks for three, counted. Jamal Meeks, they're not guarding him, so he gets that real wide open look at the basket, and he delivers. That's really killer when you say we're going to lay off a player so we can double up on somebody else, and he hits the three. Breakdown by Indiana. Nobody blocks out. Michael with the tip in, and they get the deuce. Tommy gets the tip. He's now got 12 for the Illini. Again, it's a 10-point lead, Indiana. Indiana likes to set those screens right in the traffic area in that lane. Can't allow them to move in here and set those screens. Oh, there's a screen. A real tough one by Noburn, who's wide open, spinning back to the basketball. This away from the ball and a three-second violation against the Hoosiers. Teddy Hillary with a three-second call on Matt Nova, number 24. What a high jumper he was in high school. Jumped six foot ten, six eleven, I believe, was his highest. Six turnovers against the Hoosiers. A minute 20 seconds until halftime. So unusual when you watch Illinois over the past years, they had that ability to get some transition layups. This what? club gets everything out of their half-court game. Wheeler, not there, tip ahead. That's got the trailer. Graham got, got Anderson on the right side, who'll take it himself, knocks down the jumper. Greg Graham was studying the defense. He aligned the defense perfectly, faked it out to Anderson, and then took it to the goal. What a sensational sixth man he is. Less than a minute to play until halftime. Reynolds does such a job defensively. He adds such a dimension to this team. <laughs> Nobert rips it away. Shot clock is off, and Indiana will spread the floor. If you have just joined us, it's 43 to 31. Illinois jumped on top 13 to 2, so do a little simple addition and subtraction. They've only scored 18 points since. Indiana scored 41. Indiana's going to that 2 3 set. Foul line extended, trying to really run down the clock, maybe get some motion, sneak somebody in for an easy shot. Duke runs down, and so does Oklahoma State. Seven, down to six. Whistle and a foul on Clemens of Illinois. 6.2 seconds. Rennie Clements is nowhere the player that I saw last year. Much better player. A little profile on Jimmy Jackson. Multi-dimensional. And also the Pizza Hut player of the week. Ooh, get ready. We deliver, baby. And we're going to deliver right now with this guy we got as the Pizza Hut player of the week. Will it be Christian Leitner? Will it be Clarence Weatherspoon? Will it be Shaquille O'Neal? Who will it be? We got a host of guys. Riddles out. Henderson comes back in. By the way, Ben scoring Indiana 11, Illinois 0. Hey, Ron, you had a look last night at Kansas. They certainly looked impressive again. The Jayhawks really look impressive. Roy Williams, very unassuming as far as his team is concerned, but I'll tell you, you're right. They play with a lot of poise, don't they? Oh, Bobby Knight really sung his praises, really loves the job that Williams does on that sideline, the way he teaches every and element of the game. Todd Leary comes in as the first half draws to a close here. Graham will go to the bench. He's going to put some pressure so they can't run the ball up the court quickly. Just to slow him down so they can't get a good look at the basket. Clemens has got good speed. Shot is blocked, and we are at halftime. So, the fighting Illini, all of a sudden, the offense goes out the window with John Saunders. If you know of any, send a note to Lou. He'd love to have it. All right, Ron and Dick, thank you very much. It is a big lead. The fighting... Now watch Nova, number 24, laying a horizontal screen. He's trying to screen on Clemens. Clemens going to read the screen. Oh, he had him wide open. Graham was a little slow shooting the ball, but he flared after the screen. And look at the ball movement that reversed the basketball. Constantly looking for the open man. 
Cheney number 40. Freeze it right there, freeze it. Look at the screen by Cheney. He comes up and lays a back screen. Anderson's gonna utilize that back screen, and he's gonna run the little flare cut, pop out, little head fake, and then freeze it. There's another screen by Cheney. The second screen gets Anderson wide open. I don't think there's a team in a nation that utilizes the screen as effectively as Indiana out of their half-court offense. And my fans, my friends rather, and the fans out there, you just saw an execution of their half-court game and good defensive play right there also by Baylor. Jamal Meeks will push it down as Indiana passes a turnover here in the early going to the second half. By the way, another thing that happened in the first half, Deion Thomas only took two shots from the floor. He made both of them. That's but because, he, they've got to have so much more out of here. Well, he's got to get free a little bit more, and they're not doing a good job screening for him and getting the ball at the proper time. See, it's easy to collapse on him inside because there's really nobody that's a threat out there in terms of offensive ability with creative ability. David Bailey missed that shot down at the other end as Taylor gets the follow. Unlucky, and Calvert Cheney takes it away. I'll repeat something that I mentioned during the 13-game winning streak off the top of the telecast. Amazingly, Indiana as Nobert can't get it to go. All 10 players shot 50% or better. In the first half, only one of the Indiana players did not shoot 50%. That was Bailey. He was one of three in the first half. Well, one of the reasons their defense is not creating a lot of fast break opportunities like they were doing at home when they were blowing people away. He's got some really good offensive moves inside. Neon, Dion, baby, get him the ball inside. Uh, he has seven. You can see Will Tuttle has started this ball game in the second half, number 10. He's a freshman. He's a walk-on player as well. And he gave him a spark early as we look at the stats right here. 56% versus 36%. Look at the free throw line. 16 made to 10. Typical Indiana. Rebounds plus five. Turnovers are even and a bench scoring goes to Indiana. Also, Deion Thomas has just picked up his fourth foul for Illinois. Well, he's got to get him out of the game for a few minutes, but he can't wait too long because this will really get just right away from him. Seven points now for Anderson, and here comes the seven for Thomas. So with 18-25 left in the ballgame, he is already on the bench, and Bennett will come in replacing him. He needs a little bit more help. Deion next year will get that help with Richard Keene and also Andy Kaufman, who they expect to be eligible. As we said earlier, Kaufman averaged 21 points a game last year, declared ineligible academically in September, and that's really been really a big blow to the Illinois team. Look at Tuttle. Pass the ball to the open man. Tuttle, by the way, I am told by the Illinois people, is going to wind up playing more than any walk-on since Lou has been here. No one's even close. Yeah, he came here and gave his best and has earned some quality minutes. They're limited. Only eight guys are under scholarship on the whole team. 47-33. to 33. They came back against Ohio State. They were down 20 in the second half and came back and had a shot at the basket to win the game. Pass in the middle by Bailey looking for Nover had it knocked away. That's seven turnovers against Indiana. Title working against Meeks. Sorry. Right, right now, Illinois looks like if you put them right on the ocean, they would miss right from the beach, they would miss the ocean. Hard but true. That's right. Meeks with the pass rejected by Taylor. Anderson. He's an excellent shooter. We've said that time and time again. I believe Anderson has gotten maximum out of his ability at Indiana. He's limited in terms of quickness. Indiana bench cheers. They love that hustle and scrappiness. Possession goes to Indiana. We have a lineup change for the Hoosiers. Number 20, Greg Graham checks in. He replaces Matt Hoover. Silver will come out of the lineup, and uh, Graham will come back and so a little bit quicker lineup for uh, Bobby Knight's Hoosiers right now. I remember being here when this place was really rocking and rolling, when it was so explosive with the fly in the line eye gang, Kenny Battle, and all those people playing above the rim. Gill's doing a good job with the Charlotte Hornets. Makes to Cheney. Swishes it from the corner. Are you starting to get all your filler material? Are you yeah. starting to get ready? <laughs> 14 points now for him. 51 to 13, or 33. 
Illinois struggling offensively right now to get any kind of good look offensively. With Thomas out of the game, they don't really have an offensive threat on the floor. Clemens. Michael, coming to feet behind the three-point line, 15 for him. That's his ability to shoot the basketball, but a very difficult situation because he can't get the shots on his own. The amazing thing about him is he shoots over 45% from three-point range. He doesn't shoot that well from two-point range. How can you explain that? Well, basically, he's a standstill shooter with good rotation. So is Wheeler, but Wheeler's having a tough time getting his shot as well. Good look inside Anderson with the block and Michael shot. Here comes the athletic ability of Greg Graham. Very quick. Bailey fakes the three. Penetrates. Nice, nice dish to Anderson. And he'll go to the line. And it looks like who got him? Was it Wiener? Was it Michael? Both in the vicinity. Damon Bailey broke down the defense with excellent penetration. He gets right into the gap of the defense. He draws Bennett to him. He drops it off. And there goes Anderson. He's attacked from the rear. Eric Anderson was Mr. Basketball in Illinois. Three fouls on Wheeler now. Another good player that got away is Georgetown up four at the half. Seen Hall, Providence. You talk about Jimmy Beheim. Thumbs up. Talk about Mr. Rick Barnes right now. Thumbs down. Things are kind of tough right now for Providence and the Friars. What a job Beheim did. Unbelievable last night against Connecticut. Well, it was some kind of game. We were getting ready to do the Kansas uh, K-State game and, and trying to keep an eye on that one. I wish they start to give Beheim some of his due. The guy has done a sensational job. There's playing the passing lanes by Graham. Graham going to bring it back out and set the offense as Meeks will call the play. I like him so much. I also like Darren Fellhouse as a sixth man down in Kentucky. But this kid has got great quickness. Good ball movement. Always looking for the high percentage shot. Make the one extra pass. Lay the screen. Pop somebody free. Bailey down low looking for the basketball. Janey has it stripped away. Tanner out battles in court, comes away with it. Taylor, good defensive player. They gotta find somebody to put some points on the board. He can do this. Michael, not there. Meeks tips oh. it back to his teammate, and Graham will walk it up. Great play by Meeks. He blocked out, just tipped it off. Jody Sylvester calls the travel. 52-36, we'll be right back. 1989, another dramatic page in the history of this Big Ten rivalry. Score tied at 67, two seconds left. Look at Nick Anderson. Swish hits it as the buzzer sounds. Illinois steals the win 70 to 67 at Indiana. They received the number one seed in the Mideast. Indiana was number two in the West as a seed. I remember being here. Happy birthday, Karen. I was at that game, and it was an unbelievable moment when he knocked that down, Nick Anderson, in that big, big play. Hey, who could ever forget 1987? We were also here when Illinois beat Indiana the last game of the year. Indiana went on to win the national championship, and Illinois got upset by Austin P. and I had to stand on my head in the studio because I said, there's no way, baby. I was an nc -er. I love their chant out at Austin P. one of my favorite chants. Let's go P. let's go P. Stop well, laughing here. Another turnover, that is number 11. Couple of turnovers on the floor and in the booth. 16 point margin for the men from Bloomington. Greg Graham moves so well without the ball, Ron. He's really very quick without the ball. He's silky smooth. Trying to get into a one on one situation. Wheeler with the steal. Jamal Meeks coming up behind him, tries to pick his pocket. In and out, not there. Interference up on a rim. You can't play with the ball on a rim in college basketball. Well, next Tuesday, Illinois, the Fighting Illini at Purdue. They'll tip that one off at 7.30 Eastern Time. And then uh, Georgia at LSU, 9.30 LSU. Led by, of course, one of the most dominating figures in the country. Tonight, our uh, special gentleman at halftime, Shaquille O'Neal. He had a Pizza Hut player of the week. He's so dominant now, it's frightening. See, right now, they don't really have a true option who can score. Brooks Taylor with the ball. He went 166 minutes at one time without one field goal. 
it's hard to believe. Tate around on top asking for movement away from the ball. I mean, they are so well coached. They're really, they're proper spacing. They really screen well, but they just don't have people that can execute and finalize like this guy. He can finalize. He is a primetime performer, baby. Calvert Chaney. Chaney with the hoop, but 16 for him now. We talk about when you play a team in terms of scheduling, and you think about this. When they played Michigan State and they were beaten easy, they played a hungry team. There's the deflection. Now, here comes Indiana converting in transition. We would like to at least convert 60% of the opportunities. And here goes Cheney. Seals it off, hangs. He's a left-handed player. Perfect on the square. But you know, when you think about it, in terms of when you play somebody, they played Michigan State after Michigan State lost that tough game to Michigan at home, and they had to go to Michigan State, and they melt, met a healthy team and a team that was really mentally into it and focused. Mark Davidson, number 33, the freshman, comes back into the ball game for the Illini. Down by 21 points with 13-12 left to play. Stop this. Scott Pierce. That's really a positive for Scott Pierce because his shot has really, really deserted him, and he needs that for some confidence to get some really quality minutes now out of his game to impress the coaches. Goes without saying that the Illinois needs it. They need all their scholarship players to contribute. Remember, dion has got four fouls, but he's got to play them. Excellent pass. Back to back hoops for him. Dumpster out of Euless Trinity. Excellent pass. The diagonal pass right over the top of the defense. So they've got it back to a 17-point game. Well, maybe they're anticipating that comeback like they did against Ohio State when they were down 20. Anderson, that's two. He was just inside the line. He says, no way, baby. No way you're going to come back on us tonight. Eric now has 13 points. This is the kid that really has surprised me. Rennie Clements is really having a difficult time in making a pass with any kind of confidence. You know, Bobby Knight would really be sad to learn at a passing of Joe Lapchick's wife. He had told me in an interview that Joe Lapchick was one of the most influential people in his coaching career in terms of his mind when he was at West Point and Joe Lapchick was at St. John's University in that area years and years ago. And he said he kept constant contact with the Lapchick. So I know Bobby will be sad as we all are with the passing of Mrs. Lapchick. That is the first foul against Indiana. Cheney with the foul, it's his third. Ron Franklin, Dick Vitale. Champaign, Illinois, the Assembly Hall, 59 to 40. City of Chicago has so many outstanding athletes, but it's only going to be a matter of time before Illinois has the kind of personnel that they've had here in the past. Ron, everybody praises this Rashad Griffin, a seven-footer out of King High School. People label him as one of the top five in America, and they feel, along with LSU, a battle's going to come between LSU and Illinois for sure. Rashad Griffin. Well, you can see the numbers, the contribution by Michael tonight, and oh. Illinois gets caught napping in transition. Anderson for three. Pierce. He's getting some quality time right now. Pierce with a good rebound. He hit a good open shot, made a good dunk. And the ball will go back to Illinois. So let's take a break. 11.53 left in the game. It is Indiana by 17. If you're into looking good, get into Bud Light. We get their team going offensively, and uh, right now they're down by 17 points. About all you can do is kind of grin and bear it right now, because as I mentioned in halftime, when he only scored three hoops in 13 and a half minutes, which is what Illinois did coming down the stretch of that first half, it is really hard to beat anybody, let alone a quality Indiana team. Well, 17 games don't lie, Ron. When you study the statistics, they don't lie when you're in last place in field goal percentage and free throw percentage. Those are skilled areas, and a coach can only do so much with his personnel. Who Henson can flat out coach? Anybody that doesn't believe that is really, I, I think, has a difficult time understanding basketball. But he's limited with people here. Jump ball is called. His Baylor got tied up in the paint. And this guy can coach. Are you ready for this? He is right now, when you look at his W's, amazing. 
going tonight for his 577th of W. I believe he's got a great chance to catch Adolph for ups 875 because he's only 50 years of age. He needs 300 more W's. Wheeler, good hang, got unlucky on the shot and has his own foul. Well, it's a 15-point game. Well, I'll tell you something else that Bobby is very, very pleased with, and that's the academics on the squad, and I'll break it down for you in just a minute. He's got a very good team in the classroom as well. He's got also a big time player right there. He may be a guy that comes off the bench, but when a game is on the line in the last four minutes of winning time, you better believe Greg Graham will be on the floor. I almost hate I mentioned that ankle. I mean, he was really grimacing this morning, but he hasn't shown any sign of anything. Deion Thomas just needs some help. He's got to get some people that can help him here. He 11 said, points for him now. I think he's looking up at the stands and looking at Andy Kaufman saying, Andy, you let us down. We need you. 61 to 46. Shaney gets by Pierce. Notice how they always like to take that one extra dribble into the defense and create the shot, create the opportunity. Meeks tries to feed it to the baseline, tries to get it into Damon, and there's the block from the rear. Town Michael. Knocking the ball away and uh, speaking to blocks Anderson on the other end. Eric Anderson utilizing the left hand to block the shot. We often say that left-handed players are better shot blockers. Think of Bill Russell, David Robinson, because they're really facing more right-handed players shooting the ball, and the left hand is right there for the block. Michael. For Anderson, by the way, that's four blocks for him tonight. Michael really loves playing the game of horse, I believe. They're down to 12. Maybe they got that wake-up call. Maybe they like the spot teams 20 like they did Ohio State. Anderson uh -oh. and Michael gets the board. Hey, maybe we could throw away our filler material. Cheney with the steal. Rennie Clements has got to go to the sideline. He really is not playing well. They're going to talk to him for a minute or two. And then bring him back on. They need to stop right here defensively. Indiana's got to look to Greg Graham or Cheney. Calvin Cheney reverses it. Calvin Cheney. Graham and Cheney. Some big time points tonight. And of course, uh, Anderson with that uh, jumper about three minutes ago. That's simply understanding your people on the floor. When you need the big basket, you got to go to your number one option. And that's what Cheney did right there. Flash for the ball off a good screen. Thomas playing with four fouls. Works against Anderson. Block, but also foul. Deion's really got some good offensive skills inside. He's got to get to the weight room. They say he's not hungry enough in terms of work oh, ethic and getting to that weight room to want to make himself a special player. Oh, let's ACC Big East Wednesday. St. John's taking on Boston College. That uh, is the first at 7 o'clock Eastern time and in number one against number nine, Duke in North Carolina, 9 o'clock Eastern time. And Dick, I know that you're heading to Chicago after this one to get an early flight out in the morning. Well, jump on that bird about 6.30, get down there about 9.30 down to Chapel Hill. I can't wait to get there. The last loss that Duke suffered was against North Carolina in the ACC tournament. When you look at it on paper, Ron, you don't believe that North Carolina can beat Duke. I mean, they really get beat wire to wire by Notre Dame. They really struggle at home to Florida State, who played without Douglas Edwards, uh, North Carolina. But when you look at their record, they've only lost three games. Dean Smith had another unbelievable season. And in that emotional environment, when you think about playing against Duke, North Carolina, has sufficient people that I think can make this one heck of a basketball game. I know one guy watching, Jerry Tarkanian, said, I will be glued watching that game. <laughs> Clemens and uh, Taylor exchange places as Clemens gets a breather. 63-51, 12-pointer. Cheney and Anderson, 14 of Indiana's last 18 points. This half. And on this trip, the Illini can cut it to either 10 or 9 points. Oh, what a screen out on top. They got to go to Deion Thomas or Michael. They got to find Michael or Thomas. They got to really get the ball in the hand. Oh, a breakdown defensively. Brooks Taylor is not his first basket. First two for him, and boy, Coach Knight was off the bench like a flash. 63-53, and all of a sudden, the crowd here at Assembly Hall back in it. The one great thing about the Illinois kids, there's no quit on them right here. 
Taylor called for the reach in. You know, they could have laid down after getting beat by Northwestern, but they were back in his gym, really working yesterday on all the fundamentals directed by this guy, the maestro. He was on the court, and they were demonstrating and working on all the fundamentals and the development of the game after losing that unbelievable game down to Northwestern at the buzzer by Cedric Nellums, a 30-footer. See another game off the Anderson screen. Further along the baseline, partially blocked, gets his own follow and score. That's a sensational play. I mean, that is an absolute free S man right there. Sensational, super incinerating Greg Graham. He has got 10 points. And boy, all of a sudden, a hush comes over this house that was whooping it up just a moment ago. Thomas on the turnaround. Good look, Taylor is there. Very unselfish play by Deion Thomas. Brooks Taylor gets two baskets in like a minute. That's like unreal. <laughs> Got a 10-point game, Mr. Franklin. They're not even guarding Jamal Meeks up on top. They're playing five against four. They're allowing him. Seems wide open. Look at the basket, Jamal. Bailey nails it. They have so many weapons. You make your run, it's either an Anderson, a Graham, or a Bailey. And of course, Mr. Cheney. Illinois has really played well the last five minutes. Skip pass right over the top. One more. Ooh, Taylor. Oh, a bad break there. For his size, though, has to be maybe the best rebounder in the country. What do you think? I would say that as well, yeah. Damon Bailey. Oh, he's heating up. That's the guy that played really well. Eight consecutive games. Ouch, that one hurts, baby. That one hurts. Five quick points by him in less than a minute. And just as Dick said, they got so many weapons. Montgomery just shut him out down here at Michigan State. They just closed them off. Bailey was non-factor. Didn't score a point. 20 minutes of action. Wheeler not there. Tipped out by Anderson. And here comes a two-on-two -two break. And Bailey will take it all the way to the hoop. Look for the foul. Coach Knight is up, and uh, nothing will be called. I tell you, he might have gotten fouled on a play, but he did not make a good play. His decision-making right there was very poor. Should have pulled up the foul line and waited for Graham and dumped it off for the angle drive. Uh, see, they missed. Dion was wide open. Recognizing when to enter the ball is the key in your half-court offense, especially when you got a guy that can score inside like Thomas. Anderson commits the foul. It's his second. So we'll take a break. Indiana by 15, 556 left to play. Yours free. Charles Bronson in Death Wish 3. Details coming at you. The streets were out of control, and the law was out to lunch. You know what you want. To one man refused. Kane. In the lower right-hand side, we're going to show you right now in the corner the horizontal screen by Calvert Cheney. Right here. Freeze it. See, we freeze it right here, and watch Cheney's going to make a cut across the lane horizontally right through the three-second area, right there. Wide open because offensively they pulled all their people away from the basket. Great look. Now we take another look. Look at Cheney. He wants the rock, baby. He wants to set him up perfect. Freeze it. He has set him up. Look at Mr. Graham. He lays the great screen, but now Pierce, see, rather than switch, he switches too late. Poor job of communicating by Pierce, and Cheney was wide open. He's up, Illinois! 70 to 55, just under six minutes to play in this one. Anytime you have a screen, a back screen, you must communicate, you must talk to your teammate. And there's nothing any more annoying to a coach than to call a timeout, call a play, set something up, and for your club to turn it over. That's what the Illini have just done. By the way, seven players. I mentioned Indiana. The fact that Coach Knight is extremely proud of his kids in the classroom this year. They got seven players on the Alpha Beta list. And they have five kids who are three points are over first semester. Tad Lindemann, Matt Nover, Damon Bailey, Chris Reynolds, and Brian Evans, who is a red shirt. Yeah, Brian Evans, outstanding shooter, will be eligible next year. They think he'll replace Anderson. And then they got Pat Graham sitting out, as well as Bobby Knight's son, Patrick, who's probably the best passer on the team. Cheney fading away. Anderson, I think he's going to be guilty of uh, going over the top. Yep. Eric Anderson, the key senior to lose. They also lose Beeks, and he'll really be a loss in terms of spark off the bench, but they'll have some people to replace him. I think Pat Graham's going to be a great addition next year. Outstanding shooter. He was Mr. Basketball in Indiana. He's out with a foot injury. In fact, they thought he might be ready to play. 
but it's almost a thing of uh, why this late. Anderson tries to make the save on the end line. It'll stay with the fighting Illini. It is so frustrating to a coach when you really execute, execute, and you don't have people that can finish the play and score. Lou was so relaxed last night at dinner, and he said, hey, there's no way I could feel any other way. I'm getting maximum out of these people. They think he's going to be a good player, Davidson. Mark Davidson. He's got that good body. He's really strong. He's got a Big Ten body. First two points for Mark tonight. The lob to Cheney. Indiana's really had a work out of their half court game to get point production. They have not been able to get a lot of easy transition layups. Reynolds back to Bailey. Not there this time, but it's Davidson, and he gets his pocket pick. Still loose, and the Illini. Here comes Clemens. This is the guy that's really been a different player. I thought he was a much more effective player last year. Davidson got open. Anderson didn't find him until late, and it cost Eric his fourth foul. Well, he should have utilized his right hand to try and block that shot. By using the left hand, his body was there, and he made body contact. Bobby Knight, three national championship banners fly in Indiana. 1976 with that great team with Buckner and Benson and Abernathy and May and Wilkerson. Then you had the 81 team with Isaiah Thomas and Ray Tolbert. And then you had the 87 team that won it and beat Syracuse in that dramatic finish down in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. The question is, will they get to Minneapolis? Certainly one of, I think, about 10 teams that'll be in that hunt, and I'll be certainly one of the 10. Three points now for Davidson. Just a big trip defensively for the Illini if they realistically want any kind of shot as we have four minutes left to play. And this is where Indiana usually goes to their key guys. Here's what they usually look for, a guy like Graham or Cheney. They like to get these slashes. There's the horizontal screen. They beat him to the spot. Oh, they missed Cheney. They had Graham rather right there. A lot of patience. What boys? They're not even guarding the guy up on top of Reynolds. He's a screener. Cheney. Yes. When in doubt, where do they go, Mr. Oh, Franklin? We've seen two big possessions that were needed here in the last four minutes, and the guy that shoots the ball is Calvert Cheney. He's got 21 points as Bailey almost comes away with a steal. The tough thing in a situation here at Assembly Hall is that 45 second clock is over in the corner rather than up over the top of the hoop. We'll take a break. Seven Indiana Cheney, 21 points, seven boards. And look at the next one. Illinois, three field goals in a 15-minute stretch. Michael, 18 points, four of six from three-point range. But that one drought was absolute killer for the Illini back in the uh, closing moments of the first half. Not just closing moments, a goodly part of it. Well, you know, I think they're going to have a lot of droughts like that because their inability to shoot the basketball. That's why they were 43-43 in a full regulation game against Northwestern. And then finally a three-point shot beat them at the buzzer. 43-43, big-time basketball. You know, that brought back a record. The last time they'd been held to any total close to that low was back in 1985. They were held at 34. What, I guess, by uh, uh, Purdue? Wow. You know, I think of that Illinois team back again. It's reflecting in my mind in 89 when they had all those guys with Gill and company. They were 17 in all, and then Gill got injured against Georgia Tech, and they only lost one game that Gill played in that entire year, and that was the loss to Michigan when Sean Higgins hit that jumper. I always felt that Higgins should have never left school early. Either should have Marcus Liberty from out of Illinois or Gerard Mustafs, another guy from out of Maryland. Those three guys, to me, made a major mistake. Should have stayed in college, just like Anderson Hunt last year who left early made a major mistake too many kids are not ready Ron uh, and that, there is no doubt about that they think they are until they reach that level and find out what it is truly and you know they, they sit the pine they could have been in college they could have established themselves and get even more money later on shot clock down to five down to four and why in the world we didn't let him have the inside route I don't know but he Four seconds showing on the shot clock, and he knocks it down. Well, they isolate, and he gets that good spin. He has that excellent step to the basket, Cheney, and a good touch off the glass. Another game coming up after this one. We'll be heading down to the Southeastern Conference, Auburn and Vanderbilt. Auburn's going to really surprise some people in the Southeastern Conference. They have some really outstanding firepower. They have Persons' brother, Chuck Persons' brother. 
I said this morning, I got a little trouble, I think. I hope not. I said they got to trade Chuck Person down with the Pacers because he creates a little too much tension in that locker room down there, and they've waited and waited for him to do it, and they're just not getting it done. So I said, you got to move him. But his brother, Wesley Person, he can score, and so can Ronnie Battle. Remember that name. Michael. Another three-pointer. He's got 21 points. He stands there and shoots that long-range, one-handed shot. It's not really a true jump shot. It looks like it belongs in 1950. <laughs> that's when you played and you had your underwear hanging out of your pants. No, that's John Saunders. John Saunders used to have his underwear hanging out of his shorts when he played. I think John deserves special credit for doing the job he has done under the... Oh, I mean, unbelievable. I heard him the other day with the laryngitis. I was well, it hasn't the gone tonight. He's still hurt. Wow, I can't believe it. He's playing on the injured list. Playing hurt. John understands that. He should let Valvano do a solo. <laughs> Michael, 21 points. That's a career high for him. Well, Indiana's going to get this W. Bobby Knight's going to add to his list. And they win another game away from home. You, you made an interesting point on the top of the show. Let the people know that one about the fact of Illinois having the unfortunate situation of always playing people after a loss. You know, Dick, you'd have to go a long time. It considered the odds against that happening for eight times to go up against a team that is just coming off a loss. Bailey sneaks in with a back door. Well, it's now easy time right now. A little breakdown defensively. So mentally, and you've got a team that's struggling, and then you have to face somebody that's already mad. Well, you know, we talked about that with Michigan State. They lose to Michigan. Davidson gets a score. And now they're hungry for Indiana. So when you play and where? Minnesota. They get blown out by Indiana by 46. And then 36 hours later, they show a lot of character. They're hungry. And they beat Michigan at Minnesota. So when you play and where? So important. Anderson flash to the ball. You had a backdoor cut for your teammate. Indiana about to go 16 and 3. They'll be 7 and 1 in the conference. And for Illinois, they'll go 8 and 11 and 2 and 7 in the Big Ten Conference. Nick, any closing thoughts here? Well, right now it was all Indiana defensively. Poor job shooting the ball. Mr. Reynolds gives us his approval. Bobby Knight and Lou shake hands. So there's no hard feelings of Lou Do and the General Robert Montgomery Knight. I can't wait. I'm going to get on a bus now. I'm going to Chicago, and I'm going to that plane. <laughs> Duke in North Carolina tomorrow. Wow! Okay, there you have it. Hoosiers won it. John, take care of the boys. Let's go back to you, buddy. All right. Thanks a lot, Ron and Dick. I don't know if they'll let Dick on the plane that excited. Indiana wins, and right now they take over sole possession of first place.